Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. Today we're doing a gift from Todd Crawford. I really should come prepared with minis. These are plastic, but I'm doing two. Yeah, Todd Crawford, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> This so, is quick, this has nothing to do with anything. I'm always curious. Connemara peated Irish, 22 years old. Yeah, 22 year old awesome. peated. Awesome, and then Ardbeg Renaissance from Brad LeClaire. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. These are all samples. All right, so once again, Hibiki proves that, look at this bottle. Yeah, it's a pretty bottle. Isn't it beautiful? Yep, I dig it. This is why, I remember when someone asked about what bottle should you use for a... There's a lot of good Japanese bottles. That's, oh, so good. Yeah. So this is a special edition of Hibiki Harmony. Mm-hmm called Master Select. That even looks like more of a decanter than a bottle. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So this one is uh, travel retail, right? So it's a Harmony specifically released for duty-free shops. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you just relabel and mark things up into duty free. Yeah. This is one ex like specifically blended for duty free. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's its own animal. 10 different Japanese malts. This is a floral maltiness for me. A little bit of the funk, but mostly a floral maltiness. Yeah, it yeah. includes all the barrels. Bourbon barrels, sherry barrels, and mizanara. Oh, interesting. Actually, five different types of casks, but the three... Categories. Three major ones yeah. are those, yeah. Oh, it smells beautiful. Yeah. It smells like the bottle looks. It does, yeah. It smells like it's beautiful decanted flower vase. And it gets sweeter the more you go back to the nose. The sweetness, for me at least, builds. Yeah, when I first took a uh, whiff, there was some maltiness there. But as you acclimate to the round malty note, yeah. it turns into just sweet floral. No, absolutely. That very first approach, it was never like a funky funky, but always floral dominant. But there's like this maltiness that had enough of a funk patina. Mm -hmm. But that's gone now. The more you go back to it, just that, that, sh that sweet floral element builds more and more. Oh. This is so pretty. Wow. This is a whiskey, it's at 43%, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's gonna be a lower proof for sure. This is a whiskey I would classify as elegant. You know what I mean? Dainty and elegant, but not, not a lot of complexity. Yeah. Like a picture. So not ornate. No. But you're just sim like uh, elegance in its simplicity. Yeah, elegance and simplicity and, uh, and, and probably a photograph of someone who's elegant. Like it's 2D, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in person, it's like a beautiful photograph so of Grace Kelly or something. Right, what's you know? there? Dressed up for the red carpet. What's there is really nice. Yeah. But, and it's pretty, to your point. Um, I think if you're looking to go exploring, it's, it's Good, but there's not a tremendous amount of areas to, you know, I'm going to keep on have to go back and it, and, it, and it pulls back the curtain on something new. Yeah, it's gone too fast, too. Like, it, when you take a sip and you want to linger and try to go, what am I getting? And then whew, it just lifts off and vanishes. And now that I'm going back to it, right? it's paper thin. And so all it, of the nice elegance, like, like you acclimate to that really fast. Right. And then it's, now it's starting to get already kind of boring. You know what though? Here's, a, here's the thing, and I, I don't know if it's possible, but to always be mindful to not grade whiskeys on the nerd curve. Yeah, like we're looking for a lot more interesting stuff. This is just, and whenever, this is crowd pleaser for and sure. And whenever most people um, who are going to be experiencing this bottle, but they're not necessarily looking for nerd curve mm -mm. grading, where you have like complexity and layers and you're trying to figure it out and it's unique and interesting and weird sometimes. Um, it's just nice and pretty. I think most people, yeah. that's what they're looking for in a whiskey. And I you think know what this I would is pour delivering. It for? I poured at a house party when I wanted to like really impress yeah. for something interesting and a ja real Japanese whiskey. Yeah. You know? But I know my crowd's not really a whiskey drinking crowd. Yeah. It would show everybody how delicate and pretty whiskey's capable of being. Mm -hmm. If all they're used to is like, yeah, bourbon, yeah, big flavors. But it's like, oh no, I want you to try a nice light glass of this. You know what? Like almost like aperitif. If you just let it sit in your mouth for a while, then it does start to eventually give you a little bit more of that malty intensity mm -hmm. beyond just like the floral sweetness. 
And yeah, that's nice. But again, not grading on a nerve curve. Really nice whiskey. If you're doing the nerd curve, then I think there's probably going to be a little too short-lived um, and uncomplex to be exciting. It'll be good. It won't be exciting. Yeah, there's a slight peppery note that shows up if you let it linger for long live, enough. Yeah, you just live with it there. I like that, though. Yeah, me too. Kevin Baxter, question for Rex. Where does the Band-Aid flavor come from in Monkey Shoulder? I'm interested on two things here. <laughs> whoa, whoa. One, one. Question for me? Yeah. <laughs> one, I'm interested in the fact As that... As the real kind He of asked the flavor it. profile question right. of Rex. Yes. And right. he said, where does the Band-Aid flavor, which right. I would argue doesn't exist in Monkey Shoulder. <laughs> well... I, so, so Rex, flavor, no, 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 please, please, let me help you out there. Do tell. So you know what, you know what this smells like to me? A trap? <laughs> smells like, uh, <laughs> like a butthurt hobbit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Band-Aid flavor, in my experience, it's mostly going to be coming from like your eyelids. I don't know if um, the note that but that's I, not what he asked. The note that I read is band aid. Look, man, it's subjective. No, it's not. It's, Look, it's objective you reality. Be, you want to be pouty? Everyone knows whiskey tasting is an objective reality. You want to be pouty and butt hurt? <laughs> what I'm just trying to speak for the people, Rex. <laughs> he asked a question. You know why what? can't you answer it? You ever why notice, do you have to be evasive? You notice that's every politician's move. That the bull move. Everybody always is talking. Always talking about. Well, the American people. Yeah, the American, the American people, people. What the American, the American people, people really want. Everybody's talking about the American people like they're a monolith. Yeah. Right? And you're like, wait, which one? It's like, well, the American people. Well, that one. That voted for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Japanese whiskey Rex. It's R-E-C-S. Oh, recommendations is what he's meaning. No. I was wondering if anyone had any Japanese whiskey recommendations. I'm a fan of space side whiskeys and wanted to give some Japanese ones a go. Hit me with your faves. You know what? The one we just... That's I was going to say, if you like Space Side, that's why I put that comment in this one. Yeah. If you like Space Side, you may not be able to get this if you don't get it in duty free. Mm -hmm. However, the classic Hibiki Harmony is in the same flavor profile as this. So I think the Hibiki line in general is a good starting place. Yeah. And it's going to be a little cheaper than Yamazaki because the Yamazaki is the name that won all the awards and best whiskey in that, you know. Right. So uh, that'd be my vote, Hibiki. So, so, like, perfect example, you poured some monkey shoulder here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, we, it, it, we, we like monkey shoulder, we enjoy monkey shoulder for what it is. For and, what it is, and specifically. For what it is. But if you're grading on the nerd curve, then this is pretty simple and straightforward. And the Japanese whiskey we're having right now, mm -hmm. it's actually more noticeably cool. more um, vibrant than the monkey shoulder. Oh, yeah, the monkey shoulder's... Like flat soda all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Like flat vanilla cream soda. I would say there's like a pear in there in the AB comparison with the monkey shoulder. There's a pear in the monkey shoulder. shoulder. But anyways, that's the bit oh, of, yeah. of AB. The it, pepper spice kind of pops out a little bit. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. That's it. So you want me to say it? Job well done. Are you still butt hurt? Can you tell? How would you know? Are you checking out my ass? Looks pretty hurt. <laughs> Walking bow-legged. Here's fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, I'm fighting for a friend. You steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.